Hello, my name is Cheryl Wilson, and I want to talk about this painting behind me and for a couple things. It's a 36 by 36, and I want to talk about adding a canvas, raw canvas that I hand painted into the painting. And then I want to talk about, I want to get a close up of the painting itself and talk about what I feel is is going right with the painting and some of the things that I changed uh, that um, I felt you know wasn't enhancing the painting and I just kind of want to start this conversation and maybe a series of paintings where I bring some forward and we talk about you know is the painting finished um, what would I do to change the painting um, why don't I like it what's not working, what's working. And this was a perfect example of one that I had it um, wasn't quite done and I uh, took a good hard look at it and then I tweaked a couple things and I'm gonna talk about that further in the video to help walk you through how I determine if a painting's finished and what I do to finish it. So I'm starting this video with a little addition, like a, a little plus factor here, and that is adding with this very thick um, gel, these canvas pieces. And, and the reason why I did this is later on um, in the last part of the video, I'm going to be showing this painting and another painting, and I'm going to be just talking, in my opinion, of what works with the painting and what doesn't work. And when I was looking at this painting, I knew I needed uh, something extra in it as far as a contrasting color or an interest. So I'm adding these canvas pieces and I've added these canvas pieces to a couple pieces of my art and I really like it. And so um, I'm using the heavy uh, gel and you can see my hair. I always have white paint in the tips of my hair, always. Um, sorry about that. Anyway off topic again. So anyway, the heavy gel is what I would use for anything that's heavier. If you were using like a piece of paper, like handmade paper or tissue or something else, um, you would use a lighter gel. But since I this is heavy and I didn't want it to fall off, I'm adhering it onto the canvas and you can see me really pushing it to the ends and into the fiber pieces that are frayed on that piece of canvas so that it will really stay on and it's very thick and that's what I wanted so you see me adhere it to a couple places on the canvas and it gives a little contrast and then it gives um, something fun I guess for the eye to look at and I'll talk later as to why I added it down in the left hand corner so um, we'll go on with the uh, demonstration of um, the um, talking about why I think this painting works and what things in it that I don't think works. So I grabbed a brayer on the, this piece I added and just pushed on it to really cement it in and bring out any bubbles that may be in it. It's not going to be as many bubbles with canvas as it would be with paper, but I'm just really cementing that in so that it, um, it appears flat and I'm rolling over it. If I had the camera closer, you'd see there's little fiber pieces that are frayed on the edges. I'm rolling over that so that they, they hit the canvas exactly where I want it. But that's what I'm, I'm doing here is I'm just adhering the um, canvas pieces down to my um, painting.
Next I'm bringing in a soft gel and the soft gel is what I'm going to put on top. I didn't want the heavy gel. Um, I really didn't need it so I'm adding the soft gel just as another layer to cement down that piece there and any of the little frays that I have. And then I'm going around and kind of just cleaning up a little bit on the uh, outside. And then I'm looking at what I added and a lot of times I'll talk about when you add something into your art you 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 want it to appear like you don't know what was added first the the paint or the addition or whatever so I'm wiping some of that gel off so I can take a look at what I have and you'll see me go in and add I want to bring especially that piece that's embedded into the painting there on the right. I want to ensure that that piece doesn't look like I just plopped it on top. Well, I did plop it right on top, but I, I want to embed it in there so it looks a little bit more um, cohesive with the painting. So I'm going to grab some um, charcoal marks and some paint marks and just um, see if I can incorporate that into the painting a little bit better. So here I'm just adding graphite. Next I'm going to grab some of the titanium white and just bring that color over. I'd had it underneath but just kind of bring it to the um, onto the piece of fabric. In a couple places just to make it look like it's um, a part of the painting now. I had some black paint underneath my canvas so I reached my finger underneath there. You see me grabbing some of the black paint and just um, making some of those marks um, blend into the um, piece I added. So I hope that makes sense to you, um, why I'm doing that. All right, here comes the fun part. So this is the first painting and I have a um, like a spreadsheet that I have on different things that are they're like trigger words that help me look at a painting and it, it talks about the design, the composition, the shape, the value, the color, the line, the texture and then I go into uh, after I review my painting and make my marks then I say what would I change on this particular painting and there is something uh, that that I see on this painting that that I don't like so I will change it but as I go through it I start with design composition and shape now while that is not the most important the like the value of the different tones to me is more important the design is something that pops right out at me so I asked myself, this is an interesting painting. And for this one, I said, yes, I thought it was interesting. It was interesting to me. Now, my viewpoints, uh, you know, some people will look at an abstract piece of art. And when I was a artist in residency, I had thousands of people come through and in, into my studio. And there were some that didn't like abstract art. And so I, I heard a lot of comments. But if you like abstract art, then you're open to the interpretation of what comes out of the artist's soul and what inspires them and what goes on the canvas. So to me, this is my viewpoint of my art. And um, if you disagree, that's that's perfectly fine because um, your art's going to be your art and it's not it's, that's not going to hurt me one bit. But anyway, from my point of view, it was interesting to me. Are there differences that kept me interested? Yes, I see that I had... Um, a lot of different colors in there. Uh, I had different shapes. I had a lot of white space, which I love. 
I had a big shape on the right side going into a smaller shape on the left side. And then I added the canvas pieces, which to me added a little more interest. And then in person, you can see the little threads coming off of the canvas pieces, which I thought added some fun. Uh, does it connect in style or are the styles fighting each other? This is where I might change the painting a little bit because I feel the right side and the left side are maybe almost done with a different mindset in mind. And um, so in my opinion, I'm going to change the left side because some of those shapes I'm not that, that, that fond of. So yes, that's one area that I noticed when I looked at the painting. Uh, especially if I let it sit overnight, that I'm going to change. Are there opposites enough in the painting to add interest? And again, my answer was yes. There were enough opposites in the particular painting to me that um, kept my eye uh, interested in the painting and wanted to keep flowing around. The second area was, was value, which to me is extremely important. And the value is, it's essentially the lights and darks. Uh, there's, a, there's like scales out there from white to black. And then you can take that scale and um, incorporate that with your colors. So I do have, um, of course, the white, which is not stark white. There are marks in there. There's other colors. There's painting drips that were painted over so it's white with a lot of uh, interesting uh, marks in the background there's very light like some of the um in between the drips i painted white so there's uh, more of a, a lighter white all the way through to some of the greens and then all the way through to black color so yes i feel there is uh lights and darks and enough of a contrast in my painting You'll notice that when I add black to one spot, I add black over to let the eye flow to the other side. Could in the middle there, I add a little bit more black, a little mark, maybe the pencil mark or the graphite mark that is in there, kind of hidden, is um, some black that the eye hangs on to and goes to the other side. And that's one of the reasons why I added at the bottom that piece there because that had some blocks on it and I wanted the eye to float down there. It was like this blank area that needed something and that's why I put that down there and it had uh, black in it. Is my eye drawn to shapes where light versus dark is a strong contrast? And yes, because if you see like um, places like where there's a big black mark, you'll see my white, you see it up on the right hand on the top, you'll see I did some white, uh, very loose uh, paint strokes where it's a it's a very dark con it's a contrast between the darkest dark and the lightest light and you'll see in a couple places right there kind of in the middle where i have the blue squares there's some light and then i've added a contrast of dark and that's something that um, is important to do especially if you have a dark area to add some light next to it if you have a light area to head to add some dark next to it that's something that you can continually look through your painting and add. Not all paintings will be the same, but that's just uh, something that is um, helps with the value of your painting. Uh, do I have quiet areas with my with like a focal point um, on this painting? Sure, the right hand side is definitely a focal point, and then the the white area or the quiet area. Again, it's not all white. Um, if you see the painting up close, there's a lot of markings um, that I've painted over in this painting that are um, in the quiet space. It gives it enough of an interest that it's it's not just a stark white painting, uh, but it's it's enough of a resting area for the eye to for the eye to go over to that very busy area there on the white on, on the right. Color. Now, this is more of a painting that is a lot of the uh, cool colors. So I used a lot of the blues and the uh, green golds, and then I mixed the paint, the, the colors together. And then the drips are definitely a mixture of some black and white. So it's basically just a couple colors in here, with the exception of adding the um, the pops of the the kind of the copper orangey colors on top. 
So is there light and dark contrast throughout as, as opposed to color? Yes, it's, it's when, I, when I added it, like a complementary color of the blue, um, the copper, which is, you know, kind of a, a tone of the, of the orange, it added an additional interest for the eye to look at. So that is one thing to always look at in your painting. You can definitely have a painting that's all the, um, like, you know, uh, blues, greens, and in that family with no contrasting color. But I like to add like a pop. You'll see me, see me add like a dot of red sometimes in my paintings or something just to add that opposite color or a pop color in there because that's just what I do as part of my signature um, for a lot of my paintings as an abstract artist. Um, this is what they call limited palette, um, where I chose like two colors and then the secondary colors are mixtures of the other colors. Line. Line is huge for me. That's something I, I will incorporate into my paintings as I'm painting. And then I will also go back as signature marks of mine that I will add when the painting is done. I love messy curve lines, so you'll see a lot of that as opposed to straight lines. But I will go in and add some straight lines. For instance, the drips that come down on this painting are some straight lines that counterbalance some of the curvilineal type lines. And when I add with pencil or graphite, it's usually very curvy lines. So the mixture between the two, I think, is important. So you're going to want like neat versus messy, thin versus thick, straight versus curved. And then you're going to want some soft edges and lines. So for instance, a lot of where you see the, the, um, the color end, it's softly muted into the next color. And then like, for instance, the blue squares, those are more hard edges. And that just gives you the eye of uh, interesting visual to look at. So you'll see a lot of straight and curved, neat versus messy, thick versus thin. You'll see soft edges. You'll see um, more harsh edges. And then do um, some of the lines go off the painting? Yes, a lot do. You can have a painting where you have your focal point right in the middle. But for abstract art, for me, I have a lot of my uh, lines and shapes that go off of the canvas um, just, that's just part of who I am as an artist. And to me, that adds, um, a level of interest. And I ask myself that in a lot of paintings, do I have that? The next thing I ask myself is I talk about texture. I do an awful lot with texture as an abstract artist. I have a lot of texture in, you know, maybe 80% of my paintings. The texture in here, there's a difference between texture with mediums like gloss mediums and sand paste and um, the little seed beads and all that. And then there's texture that you can get with the paint itself where you add like several layer, layers of paint. And in this particular painting, the texture is with paint as opposed to with mediums. So where you see me add... Um, uh, an extra layer of paint on top of, um, like with the, the blue, blue squares, that's the texture that is added in here. And the drips add a texture. And then there's the texture of the canvas pieces I added in. And then the last thing I asked myself, what would I do to change? As I look through everything, you know, I've reviewed everything and, um, you know, I'm liking, you know, the painting so far and I think I'm near the end. And in this painting, it's the left-hand side. Um, to me, it's, there's a one shape in there that to me just looks a little funky. And I, I won't say what it is, but I, I don't like that shape. So for me, I'm going to go in and soften some of the shapes on the left-hand side to kind of just bring the painting more cohesive with the right-hand side. It won't be a lot. But um, that was one of the, the things I took away when I asked myself all my questions. And the other thing is I might add a little bit more copper. I might add some scorfito in the copper um, on the left-hand side. So those are things um, in this particular painting. I hope it was helpful. I'm going to do another painting. It's a smaller one. 
to kind of just give you another idea and um, we'll start that next. All right, now this is the second painting. It's a 10 by 10 and I call it Analysis of Desire. And um, I can explain um, some of the things that went into this painting as I go through my list. Again, I go through like design, composition, shape, value, color, line, texture. And then I ask myself, you know, is there anything in this painting that I would want to change? And so the first thing um, is I look at the design and I look at the composition and shape and um, I say, is it interesting? And to me, yes, I find this very interesting. Um, and I actually love this this particular painting. And just to tell you up front, there's nothing on this I would I would change myself um, as an artist looking at my own painting. And are there differences that keep you interested? And um, when I looked at this painting, I thought, yes, the, the shape of the green um, area is larger and the orange area is much smaller. Uh, it's more broken up. Um, then the black shapes are even smaller and they're all different. And that's what makes this, in my opinion, this, this composition and design um, interesting to my eye. Does it connect in style? Are the styles fighting each other? Like on the other one, I thought the left and the right, you know, needed a little tweaking. But on this one, I felt that they all had the same muted tones. And, and I'll do a demonstration on this painting. But what I did was I, I used a, um, a concentration of like a dish um, liquid and I uh, broke down the sizing on the canvas so that the paint actually kind of soaked into the canvas in certain areas but the whole the greens and the the um, oranges are all kind of like the same kind of muted um, so I feel the composition goes together and then the the juxtaposition of the the stark black marks on it just give it a good balance then the added like darker peach kind of just gives it a pop. It, it draws the eye. If you see there's a peach on the right side and then up on the left um, top corner, it just draws the eye up there. And, and um, it just makes it to me interesting. Are there opposites, enough opposites in here? And I, I think this is a good example of opposites um, because you've got um, large shapes and then you've got small shapes. You've got some... Um, thin lines and then you've got like the the orange the darker orange is like the thicker lines you've got straight lines messy lines smooth and then this messy black um marks on it so there's enough of an interest and value um when you look at this particular painting um i say do i have enough lights and darks in my painting and when i added the black it just made it pop and so it needed the the contrast, I guess, of adding because the the greens and the oranges, the initial greens and oranges are about like the same value. And then when you add on top of that, like some of the white pops, and then you add the very darker thick orange, and then especially the black, um, there's just the, the value contrast between the two colors is what really makes this painting pop and stand out. Is my eye drawn from the different shapes where the light versus the dark? Is there like a contrast? And you can see like in the one on the bottom in the middle, there's a green. Um, it's it's not the darkest color the black is, but it's, it's one of the darker colors. And then you have a white splash of paint on top. Um, and then you see um, the, the dark black lines flowing throughout the painting onto different sections, even onto some of the white. Um, uh, do I have a dark, the darkest color and the lightest color? And I always talk about when you have a dark color, put a light next to it. When you have a light, put a dark next to it. And so I have some of that in here. Um, and that's done with the black marks that I've added to the painting and that very stark uh the pops of the orange is right against some white paint um let's see do i have um quiet areas and i do uh the white again it's not stark white you can see up in the right hand top there it's a very very light peach 
uh, but the eye doesn't like go there because it's there's too much other things to look at but there is a quiet area even though the quiet area is not stark white there's a quiet area that has some some underlining tones to it but there is the difference between some dark very dark uh, moments in the painting and very quiet or very light um, paintings color um, again color is one of the tools that artists use to create really meaningful artwork there's again there's really only two colors in here and then the black and then the white and then there's blends of each of those colors with each other so is there a light and dark contrast throughout yes there's light um, there's different colors of the different greens and the oranges and then there's the black and um, even though this is another limited palette um, the secondary colors that are produced from the limited palette um, produce very uh, like the gray up on the left hand side in the top is a beautiful color because it's a mixture of some of the orange in with the green when we talk about line I think line in this painting is what makes this painting so strong and gives it the the most interest there's even line with the thicker orange paint as I've taken the brush and just kind of flicked it around the canvas and then there's the line with the pencil then graphite and charcoal and um, the line some lines are straight some lines are messy so the contrasting the contrast in this are the thick lines and thin lines and even thinner lines with the pencil that you can barely see messy lines and straight lines and many of the curved lines and some of the long straight lines go off the canvas and um the um just the ju just a position ju just a position of the different types of line in this painting i think is what makes this such a um a special painting um do i have hard and soft edges and in this one there is definitely the blending of the paint into the canvas itself gives some of the areas very soft and then you have some very hard edges like the like the almost the smudge fingerprint of the black those are hard edges and just the the contrast between the two really gives the eye something fun to look at um the um i will go when you look at this the first thing i look at is the green a uh, big um, space there and then my eye goes over to the lighter orange but then right away my eye gets floated around the painting from the different black marks all the way from you know the bottom right all the way through the line that's drawn over to the left side then up to the top so line plays um, a very important part in this painting and then texture the texture in this is not done with mediums it's just done with the paint and it's done with the 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 um, technique that was used here where the paint just bled into the canvas itself so it's the texture here is done with the very muted tones with the soaking of the paint and then the added marks of this the the oranges and then the the blacks so all in all i asked myself would i do anything different or would i change this painting and um i as the artist would say no this painting is finished i love it and um I, I I just don't think there's anything in here I would change if I were to change anything I may sign my name in black instead of the silver but that's um, that was just artistic um, you know grabbing that pen at the end but other than that um, I love the painting so I hope that this has helped you going through this process I hope that you have found this helpful if you want me to do more like this let me know uh, I can pull up some paper paintings um, different types of paintings and go through what I think works in them and what I would change and why and just go through the same scenario of the different um, elements of art that I use the design composition shape value color line texture 
and how I go through and work with myself as the artist on my own work and tell myself what I would change, how I would do it differently. And this process has really helped me. And as I grow as an artist, even as my style may change, I still go through the same process on many pieces of my art and do the same thing. And I, so I hope this is helpful to you and you enjoy this. And again, thank you so much for um, being a part of my art journey. <music>